Today I'd like to talk to you about dissect switches used for free satellite TV and why they can sometimes fail. If you don't know what a dissect switch does, it looks sort of like a splitter, but it does the opposite. It actually combines multiple satellite LNB signals into one cable and you send that to your receiver. And then as you change channels, the uh, switch will electronically select the correct satellite that the channel is on. If you want more information on dissect switches, I have a few videos on my channel where uh, I go into much more detail about them. As soon as you introduce a switch like this into a satellite system though, it's one more link in the chain that could possibly fail. And from time to time, these do fail. And I'd like to just go through some of the reasons why you might have a failure with a dissect switch. So the single biggest reason that dissect switches or any switches you might use uh, in free satellite TV might fail is because people connect them with the receiver powered on. A dissect switch requires voltage to operate properly. Now here in the receiver menu, I have uh, my menu set to satellite 87 west and I'm using a dissect switch. You can see it's set up here. So I have a four port dissect switch set up and satellite 87 west is plugged into port one on that dissect switch. Now down here, you can see that the LNB power is on. Your receiver actually back feeds voltage through the coax cable to your LNB because your satellite LNB requires power in order to send a signal to your receiver. Here you can see the LNB power is on and there's a good signal. Watch what happens when I turn the LNB power off. No signal. So let's switch the power back on. It's really important that when you are connecting a dissect switch in line, you need to shut the power off on your receiver. Uh, sometimes you'll actually get a spark because there is voltage on that line. And what can happen is you can create a short without realizing it and that can actually damage your dissect switch. So if you don't unplug the uh, receiver power and connect your dissect switch with the power off, what you end up might end up doing is getting everything connected and you think, well, everything's connected properly and you might have a problem with the switch because uh, of a short that you've created by not turning the um, receiver off or unplugging the receiver, I should say. You don't want to ever connect that with voltage going through your coax. So that's the number one reason why dissect switches fail is because people hook them up with voltage going through their coax line and you always need to make sure to unplug your receiver before you put a dissect switch in line between your receiver and your satellite LNB. So no matter what kind of switch you might be installing in line between your receiver and your satellite LNB. It's really important to always make sure you unplug your receiver first, whether you're putting in a dissect switch, a, an inline amplifier like this, a 22K switch, or even just a simple splitter. All of these will have power passing through them. And if you have the voltage on while you're installing them, there's a chance you might create a short and you'll probably damage the uh, switch you're, you're putting in. And in the worst case, you could actually damage your receiver. So take a second and unplug your receiver before you install any kind of switch or splitter in line with your uh, satellite dish and receiver. And if you're interested in more information on any of the uh, switches or components you see here, dissect switches, inline amplifiers, 22K switches, or splitters, I have videos I've made on all of these where I go into much more detail, and you can find all of those on my channel. Another reason why these switches fail is because they get mounted outside a lot of the time and they're exposed to the elements and water gets inside of them and that will no doubt uh, corrode the electronics. The body of these switches, there's no guarantee that it's watertight, that and also these coax connectors. Water will eventually work its way in there and then it's just a matter of time before the switch fails.
exposure to any kind of precipitation, rain, snow, fog, dew, frost, any of those can work their way into these switches and corrode the electronics. So here's a couple of pieces of coax I have coupled together and if we just take them apart here quickly you can see that water has gotten into this connection it's all stained and discolored and it looks like there might even be a little bit of rust in there as well and looking at the coupler right here you can see that it's got some uh, discoloring and staining on it as well so I probably should have made this connection more watertight but I didn't and that's what happens and the same thing happens with switches if you leave them out in the elements eventually water will work its way into those joints and if these connections corrode bad enough that can affect your signal so what you want to do if you're installing a dissect switch outside is try to protect it from the weather as much as possible even if you can't make it watertight, at least try to shelter it from the weather and rain as much as you can. Here's a dissect switch that I changed a couple of months ago, and I ended up putting it inside one of these uh, data boxes that are normally used for telephone and cable TV. But it's got this chase in the back here, so I just slipped the switch inside and then it just gets covered up like this and that keeps it pretty much out of the weather for the most part but I've got this splitter down here that I need to do something with soon too here's a switch cover I made with an old plastic coffee can just drilled holes in the lid and the bottom for the coax to pass through and then zip tied the lid on so it's got like a hinge and there's a splitter inside there it's not waterproof, but it's definitely keeping the weather off of this uh, splitter. It looks pretty new still. And I also drilled a hole in the bottom, you can see, so that any water that might get in here can drain out. The other thing about dissect switches is that the quality can vary uh, wildly between manufacturers. I've bought in some cheaper or more modestly priced switches, and they worked fine for a while, and then they just start to kind of go haywire. There was one time I had a cheaper switch connected with a C-band satellite on one, uh, one of the ports and I had a couple of KU-band satellites connected to the others. So I was running a scan on one of the KU-band satellites and I started picking up some channels that I normally only see on C-band. So I thought, oh boy, they're starting to move channels from C-band to KU-band. Well, that wasn't the case. What was happening is the switch was malfunctioning and some of the C-band transponders were bleeding into the other ports on the switch. So that's not a good thing. Um, and that was a switch I actually had inside. That one wasn't even exposed to the elements. So sometimes it's just a quality, uh, quality problem. These ones here made by Amico, these are really good switches. I haven't had any problems with these at all. They come with a nice uh, plastic covering if you are going to mount it outside somewhere but I would definitely put this inside another enclosure just to keep it as weatherproof as possible. But these haven't given me any problems at all. They've, they're excellent. Amico makes really good receivers uh, for free satellite TV, and these switches are awesome. I'm going to try and pick up a few more of these when I can.